Hello, and welcome to the second video in the Food Too Good to Waste video series. This one is titled Compost Ecosystem. In this video, we'll take an in-depth look at the work of the decomposers and the microbiome inside the compost pile. We'll also discuss how they cycle nutrients and energy to support the larger ecosystem. In the compost pile, we have organic materials of many kinds. That's the food in the system. The primary consumers are the first level of critters that eat the ingredients. Like any food web, the most numerous creatures are at the bottom level. In the case of the compost pile, it's the bacteria that graze on the nutrients, the dead stuff, in the pile. The energy that they capture gets metabolized to run their bodies and then either pooped out as good plant food or passed on up the chain as they are eaten in turn. Think about all the changes happening. Trillions of creatures eating, pooping, and being eaten in a kind of crazy party, like a cake that bakes itself. Take just a second to listen to this actual recording from deep inside a compost pile. When it's over, the smelly green stuff is gone. The dry fibrous materials, the browns, are totally transformed. The minerals are concentrated, leaving sweet-smelling, mellow compost, ready to grow more plant life. The prairie ecosystem is well described by the food web you see on this slide. When I say ecosystem, this is the typical example of what you might picture in your mind the living portion of the ecosystem. But all the animals and plants you see depend on the soil below. If that soil isn't constantly being fed by the organic materials from the remains of all this life, it starts to degrade and decline in fertility. Do you see the two small labels at the bottom of the chart that say decomposers and detrivores? If they were weighed together, from one acre of soil, these microscopic critters may weigh as much as two large horses. By weight, they're the biggest players in the food web, and they're the most important to any ecosystem. Every ecosystem depends on those decomposers to create nutrient resources for soil. Fully half of life is the dying, decomposing, and renewing part. We're alive and have a natural bias toward living things. But without the dark half of the cycle of life, there's no food for the living half. Looking at the cycle of life chart, you can clearly see that half of the cycle is fueled by non-living material. Once something dies, the stuff that made up the living organism becomes food for an entirely different food web. That is what we're going to explore today the ecosystem of decomposing organisms. Bacteria do the first stage of decomposition. Fungi come in second, and finally the basic parts are reassembled into humus, a more complex plant food. In nature, all waste is taken care of through decomposition, but humans interrupt the decomposition cycle by not allowing nature to decompose things. Humans throw things in the trash. This is messy, smelly, and attracts pests. Humans impact the Earth's environment by putting things that would normally decompose into plastic bags and sending them to landfills. However, with a little work by us humans, the decomposition can occur in a compost pile. Compost piles accelerate nature's regular process by creating perfect physical conditions and assembling a rich buffet of food for the composters. Let's take an even closer look at a compost pile and the decomposers that live in that ecosystem. This is the food web of the compost pile. This food web starts with the dead organic materials that are fed on by bacteria. They're so tiny that you need a 1,000 magnification to see them. It ends up with big beetles, earthworms, and spiders. 
In between, there's lots of eating and dying going on. Decomposing starts with single-cell bacteria, then multicellular, yet very small animals, and all the way up to the fifth-level predators, the larger insects, which are the grizzly bears of the pile. These insects connect the compost ecosystem to the larger food web as they become prey for animals outside the pile, like birds, lizards, mice, frogs, snakes, and even more. Whatever size the creatures, from the smallest to the biggest, a compost pile is a 24-7 truck stop diner with all the lights on. If the creatures of this ecosystem were compared by amounts, the bacteria would dominate. There are more bacteria in a compost pile than there are grains of sand on the earth. This would explain why half of a finished compost pile is the nutrient-dense skins of the bacteria that ate the food. Did you know that when bacteria eat, they use external digestion? What? They slime their food with enzymes, let the enzymes digest and break down the food, and then directly absorb the digested food liquid. In order for external digestion to work, a very moist liquid environment is required. In this video animation, we are seeing about 40 doublings of the bacteria population in 20 seconds. After three days in a compost pile, that would have 216 doublings. The number of bacteria would have 65 zeros. The secondary consumers are much larger than bacteria. They need only 150 to 400 magnification to be seen. They eat huge numbers of bacteria, then grow and reproduce themselves. Paramecia are like little one-celled slippers covered with tiny hairs called cilia that let them swim and also sweep food into their gullet. You can see paramecia with 100 power magnification, 10 times larger than bacteria. In the upper right, you can see food that they are eating. Rotifers are larger multicellular animals. They use cilia to sweep food into their bodies. You can see the mouth parts grinding the bacteria and the food that they ingest. If you look closely, you can see the cilia at the edge of this one's mouth, sweeping the water and food in. This roundworm is almost visible to the naked eye. You could see it very well with 20 to 40 power magnification, much larger than the rotifer, for example. You can see it wiggling and eating as it moves in and out of focus. Earthworms live in many compost piles. They have sucking mouth parts and need soft food. The bottom layers of the pile are usually where they live, where the food is soft and the pile is not too hot. Since they eat a lot of bacteria and micro-animals, we can call them second-level consumers, even though they're pretty large. Earthworms are the ultimate prey species, however, eaten by birds, frogs, fish, reptiles, and mammals. The ring around the bottom of this compost pile was dug by robins feeding on worms. The third level of consumers are next. An example are these rove beetles. They can eat the larger prey species in the pile. As a group, the third level consumers represent a broad range of critters, from micro beetles to spiders to millipedes and ants. The only thing they share is their feeding or their trophic level. That means that they could eat roundworms, rotifers, paramecium, and many other level two creatures. There are other changes as we look at higher trophic levels. These higher level animals live outside the hot, moist core of the pile. As the pile matures, there's less raw material that feeds bacteria and more large predators eating on the mid-level species. The pile does not look anything like the raw organic material that was in it at the beginning. The pile
pile is darker in color now, more dense, and more like rich black dirt. This compost pile is almost finished. We assembled different organic materials and then nature's decomposers used physical and chemical changes to make rich humus. Some materials were high in protein, others were high in carbohydrates, and still others brought unique minerals or sugars. The food web in our pile became a living stew, a diverse habitat. It brewed and rotted, lived and died, until it cooked up the perfect food for new life. As we've seen, it takes a whole community of living creatures feeding on dead organic material and each other to create this transformation. This dedicated crew produces the food that makes new life possible for the greater ecosystem. Also notice that we didn't have to assemble this complex community of critters. We built the pile well, and they came to do the work for us for free. It takes a solid understanding of the compost process to avoid bad odors, keep out pests, and deliver the rich food plants need. You are well on your way to having that understanding. The activities you will be conducting in the Food Too Good to Waste project will prepare you for your next steps. Thanks for your attention and good luck with your Food Too Good to Waste project. Why don't you put me in the compost pile? Put me in the compost pile. Let nature use her composting crew.